Here we go. Recording now. That's all right. Well, Rachel, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're going to get a chat today just about obviously foil search and rescue um, and the event that the school's going to be running and, and just kind of getting a bit of an update on how things have been for foil search and rescue since it was the Aidan O'Donnell run last year and then also during lockdown. So I suppose my, my first question for you is obviously foil search and rescue a, a massive place in Derry in terms of what they do for the local community and it's, it's volunteers. Um, how difficult has the lockdown been in terms of raising funds to help towards the work that you guys actually do? Yeah, uh, the charity and its volunteers do play a vital role within this city. The charity, the way it's set up, it receives 15% funding and that's through the Public Health Agency and our local council and the other funding is 85% through the public and their donations through their fundraisers. Um, <clears throat> it's a mixture between businesses and schools. Throughout lockdown, trying to raise funds, it wasn't necessarily difficult, but definitely different. So it was. Um, our charity is supported massively through local, but also globally, believe it or not. We noticed during lockdown that there was still a lot of people who still wanted to do fundraisers for the charity and bring in those vital funds that we needed. There, you noticed that this was adapted um, through the lockdown with a lot of virtual fundraisers being happening instead of people being able to gather socially. Um, however, we did notice that through lockdown we do our bucket of pain and that is our biannual fundraiser show it is. That normally brings in around 20,000 average a year for us, and that's what is, sustains the charity. Because of lockdown and social restrictions, we weren't able to go and do that. However, we did have the opportunity to do the virtual fundraising, which we did through Virgin Money. And then our other two internal fundraisers are flag days. That's where we go around the town and we would stand with our buckets. And again, they're going to be affected this year as well with a lockdown with social distancing and you know not being able to gather. But again, we're just grateful that we have the virtual options to fundraise. And like I said, through lockdown, the many people that were still looking to support the charity through carrying out fundraisers in whatever way they could, it was still really big. And that is the wonderful thing about Derry and the surrounding areas. When there is a cause, they do come out and they do back it. And You'll know from experience, you know, they, they'll go to any lengths to actually help out. Yeah, definitely. The support um, throughout the city and, you know, wider areas is fantastic. It really has a good community spirit. So everybody does really pull together for whatever's needed at that time. And we do find that we are supported massively and generously within the city. As you say, you are well supported and, and people know about foil search and rescue, but there's always additional things that maybe people don't get to hear about or don't maybe know about organisations as yourself. So, you know, what are some of the things that you can take chance now to tell us more about to do with foil search and rescue? Yeah, so most people know and understand how we operate. Most people know that we're an emergency service on call. 24-7, 365 days a year. That team is made up of about 20 volunteers and at the drop of the hat, whether they're in their work, having their dinner or a chat with the family, they drop and go. Um, and then most people know that we carry duty night then where we patrol the river and that's normally a Thursday, Friday and Saturday between 9pm and 3am. And we normally do that in um, between our boat, a walking team and a jeep. Um, Another thing within the charity that people probably aren't aware of is that we do have a big massive fundraising team and that fundraising team goes out once a month and collects the orange trophies that sit at the towels at the shops and this dedicated team goes every month to every shop within the town and collects that, brings it back and spends a full week counting it as well. That's another um, monthly income that the charity as well rely on. So without that dedicated team, that would be an income list. But that team is also there as well to go and help people who are doing fundraisers in need of ourselves, to go and help on the night, support them and give any assistance that they can. 
Another area within the charity that we have is we have an educational team. So our educational team will go around different schools, businesses and organisations. They provide water awareness and water safety talks um, that would be more aimed towards the younger, the primary school kids. And then for secondary school and um, working level and up, we would go and provide talks about what for search and rescue are, what we do, how we operate, and they would also hand out signposting materials for people they pass on and the awareness about you know mental health. Um, <clears throat> another area within the charity that people wouldn't be very aware of is that we've got swift water trained volunteers. So those people are trained to help other services in the event of like an emergency flood. So for example, there was about three or four years ago when August coming, there was big floods within the town. So our trained volunteers were able to go out on that night, assist the fire service and the police to help people get them out of their homes and get them get the big, sorry, get them to a place of safety. And um, you know, we we have a dedicated team that goes through extensive training to get to that level. So those are the wee additional parts and the charity that people might realise that what we do and what's available for them. Brilliant. And it's, it's amazing that 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 level of, of volunteer does exist, you know, for and, and the causes that they're gonna help and the situations they're gonna be able to help out in. Um, yeah. in terms of then the, the school supporting with the fundraising, there was the the run in, in memory of Aidan O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. How does Fund like that to go about helping yourselves? Yeah, so that event last year brought on an amazing £14,000 and you know that was split between ourselves and Zest. So that's £7,000 that each charity got and that type of money makes a huge difference within each charity. Um, as mentioned, 85% of our funds comes from the public so that type of money is what sustains us and keeps us going. Um, <clears throat> so when we receive that donation, it goes within multiple areas within the charity. As we use boats and a fleet of vehicles, we're constantly topping up our fuel. That would be one of our biggest costs within the charity and it's constantly, you know, in need. Um, our equipment as well that we use has to be constantly maintained. Some equipment have to be regenerated every year. Or every five years so again that money goes toward maintaining the equipment to ensure that our volunteers have the right equipment to be used for their life-saving work um, for an example every member of our pager team it can cost 1200 pounds to kick one member and currently there's 20 members in our team and every operational volunteer works out at around 600 pounds for operational volunteers and that's to ensure that they have the right gear, the right uniform, the right equipment to do what they can do. It keeps them safe and it also keeps those that we're helping safe as well. So there's 95 people within our charity. So if we add that together, you know, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of running costs within the charity. So all that money just gets fed directly back into the charity. They are resources that we need. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's great to hear that actually it does you know, it, it has a purpose and it is well used and, and the people of Derry get to see that actually, it, you know, it is well used. Um, obviously, you mentioned there about some of these the virtual events that have been going on. The school are going to be doing, it's, part, it's actually going to be part of our, our sports week. Uh, we usually have a sports day, but this year it's going to be a virtual sports week. Uh, and the Thursday of it is going to be the, an, an event where we're going to tie in um, to remember that a couple of pupils she passed away. So just tell me this, um, what does it mean then for yourselves when the likes of St. Columns and other ones get involved with the fundraising? Yeah, <clears throat> it's, it's so important because, you know, especially when it's the skills in that generation, um, they spread the powerful messages of you're not alone. And, you know, lockdown has brought a lot of changes for everyone between school homing, um, changes of sauna samples, not being able to go to the shops, you know, without standing in a big long queue. It can be very frustrating and can bring on a lot of emotions that a lot of people have never come across before. Um, 
for the schools being able to go virtual and do a lot of things online, like our interview today, it gives us the opportunity to spread them powerful messages and not just spread them locally, but globally. You know, it can go across the whole world, what we're trying to get across. Um, having people participating in the event is important to us as, like I say, it just helps spread that message that you're not alone, that everybody is here for each other. Everybody's going through the same thing and we all have someone to talk to. And our hope is that um, you mentioned before about the money that we raised the last time. The support was incredible. I remember being there and videoing bits of it and getting it on our social media. And it was just, it, it was an incredible, incredible evening. Um, as it is every time, uh, you know, the school has, has hosted a 5K or a walk run, the, the people have supported it massively. You know, we really hope that this time, even though it's virtual, we can still get the same numbers of people involved and, and the details of that will be shared and everything. But um, just before we go then, and I'll put you on the spot here, is there any other kind of events and fundraisers that you can promote now whilst you've got a chance? Um, yep, like you're saying, your 5K is for Aiden and the O'Donnell family. So I know they're doing another one with their 13K over 13 days as well. And um, they're doing that Three Virgin Money in Facebook. Um, there is loads of different virtual challenges coming up too as well. AD Fitness is doing a 400 kilometers to go around the world. But again, they're doing it, doing it at your own home or within the garden. Um, again, it's just, it's promoting everybody. A lot of these people are not only doing it for ourselves, but are splitting it between Saturdays. Yeah. Um, at the weekend, there was a hashtag don't give them five, and they wanted to raise five thousand pounds. They split between five charities by completing five thousand kilometers. And the last I checked, their total was up to eleven thousand pounds. So they were able to get over and above of what they wanted. So you know, people tripping up with charities and splitting, you know, across them all. Every charity is just as important as each other. Every charity at the minute is struggling for, you know, getting them the funds. And it's just so important as well for everybody just to come together, support each other, and just to support what's available in their city. In turn, that comes around and helps us as a city. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your time. And um, all the details in terms of follow search and rescue any fundraisers you know or and for this one that we're, we're talking about in particular will be will be posted up with this video so thank you very much for your time thank you so much for having me and just keep an eye on our facebook as well we'll be just sharing everything as we go along as well